Manosari wudo kelo kaweri, buko no limo ke godongo, ane mapido kawa molo kambi jokeri chote. Jina yangu asa kabize mimi ni hitwa Nelson Ochien Orwa. Na kwa jina mziki mimi naitwa Ochien Nelly. Na nilizaliwa 1940 na mziki nilianza 1961 my first meeting with ochiem was very special because the first thing i asked him to do was to give me a guitar and when i played i saw some sense of joy on ochiem's face and later on when i asked him why he was so happy he told me that you know what tom i have hope that Benga will not go with us, Benga will stay, you know. And I demonstrated that by playing. And that to him was the hope that he was looking for, I believe. Chieng Nelly, nyakati zetu tukiwa vijana, tumecheza na Chieng Nelly na Ogara. Tumecheza, mene kacheza gitara, kuna yemba moja, chopati wadore mo, chopati wadore mo, uyo mene kacheza gitara. Ile mungano ya mizisha ni kwa zamani. So nilicheza na uchengi neli kwa mga. Na uchengi neli na mfahamu. Hata wakati tukitengeneza bendi ya Bongo Boys kule na kuru. Uchengi neli alikuwa mmoja. Wawale wali changia kuinua hiyo bendi. Uchopati wodoremu, uchopati wodoremu, wabaru chojo. Ochien Nele was a, a guitar phenomenon who understood Benga music like nobody else. I was fortunate enough to meet him and hear his uh, Benga music, which to me at the time was something I'd never heard before. So it was, it was an amazing experience. This man was a joy to know. Steve Kivutio at Kettable Music had gotten in touch with me and asked me if I would be interested in booking performance by Ocheng Nelly, and I really didn't know anything about Ocheng Nelly at that time. And I asked where I could listen to his music, and I was referred to a small little speakeasy joint here in South B that close to the industrial area in Nairobi. So I made it out there one night and there was the legend himself ch chilling at a table with his guitar during a set break, playing really to an audience that really knew him and knew his music and knew his favorites as well. I first got to know Ching Nelly, I think if I remember correctly, around 2008, between 2008 and 2012. Yeah. So at that time we were doing a project, uh, we, we call it the Afro Country Project. Uh, the project was where we were trying to fuse, uh, the Afro element was, uh, we were trying to fuse Mugidi and Benga together with the country music from the US. Because yeah. there was like, some similarities between like, Mugidi and country music. So together with a company called, uh, some of our, one of our partners from the UK called the No Nation. So they, they brought down uh, two guitarists two country musicians from the US and also some engineers from the UK and then uh, we brought in uh, Ocheng Nelly to bring in the Benga element and also we brought in uh, Joseph Kamaru to bring the Mugidi element. So it was during the working of this project that I first got to encounter Ocheng Nelly. I was among the first people uh, Ocheng Nelly would meet when he was coming to Kitabu Music and um, when you first see Ocheng Nelly he's a very down to earth person but when you come to listen when you come to listen to his stories that's when you realize that he's really a great person because he had really he he really contributed a lot to the kenyan music being one of the pioneers of uh, benga music i met to ching in 2012 uh, during a performance at thursday night live at choices so my interaction with him is limited to 
his performances and talking to him after the performances and a few interactions here at the go down. But to me, he was a warm, genuine, and charismatic. Charismatic in the sense of he, he gentlemanly and having a lot of uh, decorum. For me, the first time I, I went to watch him at uh, Choices, everyone was drawn in, from the Mzee to the youngest person. I think till today, he got one of the longest on calls. <laughs> Uh, he finished at Chases. He finished playing and people asked him to play over and over for almost, I think the, one of those first, almost an hour and a half, if not <laughs> two hours. <laughs> him repeating songs and people, and I remember even Jibril now had to get a hat and people, and people are ready, readily contributing. Um, I think the time his CDs came out, uh, they were snatched <laughs> once people had the CDs here. They were all over, and people even started complaining, like the people who didn't get it. Initially, I used to hear a lot about Chengnedi, although is uh, like I used to hear bits of his music playing on radio, specifically KBC, as I was growing up, and um, I used to hear a lot of mentioned about him, although I'd never been so much into Benga music. I've known of Chengnelli's music from a long time ago, from the 60s, when I was playing with the Ogara Boys Band. And that was Chengnelli, uh, Samuel Akecho Yossi, and John Ogara Kaisa. And then even later on, when I decided now to interact with him, when he used to play at a, a club called Acacia in Nairobi West. So I've known him for quite a long time. The first time he performed at uh, Thursday Night Live at Choices uh, in 2012, as soon as I started performing, everybody was impressed, like, who's this guy, where has he been? So that, that was my feeling the first time. Then after that, uh, my friend Bobby Mkangi even insisted that he wants to be taken a photo with, with uh, Ocheng Nelly and said, this is a legend. For me, it was really an honor to say, you know what, I, I must have a, take a picture. Uh, with, with the chair, I'm, I'm looking at a, a living uh, monument. Uh, this is a legend out here and um, I just had to. <laughs> Funny enough on stage, even the young people used to dance to his music. We used to, when we played at uh, Choices, it was funny how the, the older people did not have space to come and dance to Cheng's music because the younger guys had filled up the space and they were all dancing and uh, getting into the groove and all that stuff. The first time I met him was uh, when I actually physically met him was when he was invited by Tabu Osusa um, and the Ketabu team to come over and record, re-record some of his old work. That's the first time I actually met him physically, but I had listened to some of the songs that he had written and um, you know and some of the songs that he had played on on previous recordings some of which were played even on uh, VOA I remember the time they did something on Dio Misiani and then they also did a couple of tracks and the guy mentioned about one of the track listings he mentioned the guitarist and he mentioned Lucien Nelly that's the first time I'd had that name I became a bit curious about, about uh, some of the Benga greats because coming from Western Kenya, we used to hear a lot of that music playing around Kisumu town. When I now came to, um, started working for Nation Media, is when I started looking for these people who were actually playing the music as opposed to this other music that is usually, um, I mean, mixed on a computer or keyboard and that kind of thing. So my brief was to find these people, specifically younger musicians who are, um, who are doing live, live music. And um, there is a guy who was working with uh, Cheng Nelly. His name is Akuku Danger. And um, that is the guy who now led me to Ocheng because at the time he was his protege. There is a time I, was, uh, I came in Ketibu, at Ketibu and then I I find uh, Ching sitting at the outside the compound, and then 
Tabo Sousa at uh, t uh, Tel Sachin. There is a someone here. He can be good in singing. So I ask him if he can do something with me, and then. Sani wa paroti na sabusa ya kindube Sani wa paroti na salina Ochu mandi ya kindu wa yowa Ochu mandi ya kindu wa yowa Kalando tebishe meji mudomos Samuza ni jina ya mtu kwa mba Yani ya jina kujisifu ni adieni mutamu kama sana Sasa ya hui mtu alikuwa na hitu otima Sasa alie alijiita jina ya Samuza Samuza hile wasichana na prenda sikini Sasa ndio tungee wimbo hile na hitu otima Samuza Hiyo ni kama niki na hitu wakuna kitu ya hii Sani wa paroti na salina As a music producer, we were trying to actually to revive his career. Then before he died, uh, Ocheng Nelly had been recording fantastic music at Ketable Music. I got to know him working at Ketable Studios, and uh, um, I was I, I first came to, to Ketable to, to do some acoustic construction work for their studio, and um, so so I met him and. Uh, over the last year, I've been working more and more with Ketabul, so I I, 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 just, I used to see him a lot in the studio, you know, and uh, I was lucky enough to record him as well, uh, I think twice. And he was he was always um, great to work with and uh, had a great sense of humour. It's on very few occasions that we do get to have that experience where you can actually sit and listen to what I would say, a real musician, you know, somebody who's been at it many years even before you were born. And you could feel it and you could see and say, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is what you call music. And you can see why uh, this guy is at this and that's why he's been at it for all this while. I loved him uh, most when he was doing cover versions of uh, one of the old new pioneer musicians known as Olima Anditi. And there's a song called Ogilo, which was really fantastic. But it was originally done by Oli Manditi, but Chien really, really played it very, very well. Ogilo ni ni kelo na gita ni poda tin kanena donko ngama yang poi ra 
Well, nay, Nikelo Nagita, and they put up Canina Doko, Mama, young boy, and young boy, and Duke boy, a paraboka, mother, and young boy. Has been one of the leading guitar players, you know, in the Benga genre. Uh, one of the few who have actually been able to influence you know, um, a host of musicians, even at a time when, you know, the media was not as advanced as now. Ochemneli alikuwa mwana muziki mpole, asia na fitina, mwana muziki ambayo unamweleza kitu, anajibu, kama ni kukosoa, ata kukosoa pale pale, na utaona ni ukweli, amepanya kitu cha kweli. It's not how good you are, but it's how different you are. It's, there are very many good musicians out there. There are very many good guitar players, very many good singers. But there is only going to be one or Cheng Nelly because he was very different. We also met when he was uh, doing some work with uh, Eddie Gray. So, yeah, and the first time he performed, uh, that one time, I remember even in, in uh, a commentary I've given about my life and uh, my interactions and my experiences, I've listed that first concert as one of the highlights of my, my life. His approach to songwriting, his approach to singing, his voice was raw, but his voice was on target, if I could say that. You know, it had emotion. He didn't play, he didn't sing songs that he didn't mean. Every song had a story and all the stories were true. I came to understand from interviewing him that he was much greater than he seemed. Because in person he was very down to earth and you could easily like uh, pass him by on the street not knowing he's someone who is quite useful to our own musical culture. So I came to understand that he is actually one of the pioneers of the Benga style and that he, he is a very influential musician in the sense that his style has also influenced the uh, modern day Benga musicians. But then the thing about him was that he was very down to earth, as I said, and he was very um, approachable and very um, social and uh, you know, he liked to crack jokes with the younger musicians at the studio. And basically he was loved by everyone. Yeah, I mean, we always had fun talking about uh, Kenyan history. I mean, they told me a lot about uh, how he started music and even how the Congolese came here. He worked under guys like uh, musicians like Edward Masengo and uh, John Bosco Mwendo and even uh, Adolf Banyora. So he used to tell me a lot of uh, his history about Kenyan music. So that's how I really remember him and, that's, and I'm missing for that. He was full of information. Is, is, is a man I, all along I, I referred to as my father because we later developed a relationship and we became very, very close and he could tell me the stories, you know, of the 50s and 60s because he was there and they interacted with uh, my late father in that age group. So I learned a lot. I got the African narrative from him, the Kindu narrative, the Benga narrative. And I feel very fortunate that I got it from one of the masters of Benga. Well, you know, we have this event every Thursday. The hallway that enters this restaurant has posters of various musicians from predominantly the Americas, you know, greats in the African-American music tradition. And when we started the live music platform there for Kenyan artists, I was encouraging the ownership there to say, hey, let's take space on these walls and put up some photographs of Kenyan artists. So a wonderful photographer here in Nairobi named Paul Moneni has been regularly attending our events and was just shooting, you know, taking snaps of the artists and the performances. And 
when I finally was, okay, I'm going to do this, I asked Paul, can you give me your three bests from the series that you've shot over the last year? And one of the three he brought was a Cernelli. And up to now, I still think it's the best photograph we have on that wall. The, the background, the, his face, his smile, the evident joy of his expression, sharing with that audience was a winner. So immediately, of course, I ordered that print and um, I'm glad I did. You know, it's like a one of one. Uh, in choices, there are images of uh, foreign musicians images of them framed and put up on the wall of choices. So from that first night that I photographed with Chengeli, a photo I took of him formed the first image ever to be put up at choices. A framed photo that is, to be put up on the choices wall. It came from that night. So photographing him was special because it, that's the moment my collection started appearing. Uh, my images started appearing on the choices wall and I mean that, that that image is now iconic you know the people that own choices pub and restaurant are great music lovers and had most of their attention as far as the aesthetics of the club really had been thinking about more like a jazz club in the United States and so the images they had on the walls were pretty much people from the R&B blues and jazz tradition of the United States well in that conversation I'm like hey guys you know, we got to get some Kenyan artists up in these walls and I'm just thankful that they were open to that and gave space and once we put Ochengneli up and we just saw how it made us feel that we walk into our place and we see our people. And it invigorated my own relationship to the club, first off, my relationship to the musicians in the city. And from those first photographs of Ocheng, we actually have like about nine photos on that wall now, featuring various artists, Susanna Wio, Mercy Myra, Maya Von Leko, um, Bill Selanga of Just a Band, Sarabi. And the ownership at Choices, they themselves have taken it upon themselves to purchase each and every one of those original prints to put on their walls. And I've really given the audience that walks through those halls, like, hey, these are our people. This is our music. And we're here to celebrate and enjoy that. And Oh Cheng's picture was the inspiration for even just that aesthetic change and shift. Oh Cheng really has worked with the numerous musicians from Gettable uh, Stable, it's Eddie Gray, worked with the uh, Akuku Danger and then also the one of the last uh, pro projects I did was a hip-hop uh, song with uh, a hip-hop artist from Finland and uh, from LA in, in the States so it was really fun and uh, I think I really enjoyed it and it's a great song The, one of the recording projects I did with him was uh, he did a collaboration with two, uh, two rappers, one from LA and uh, one from Finland. And um, they did a, a collaboration with Benga Music fused with uh, hip hop. And uh, I was the engineer on that session. I remember us guys did that song very, very like late in the night. We had to stay at Kitabul Studios until very late in the night with uh, Paleface and Matre. And uh, the thing that really shocked me about Ocheng is that he was quite open-minded about it. Like, he was, he was into Benga, like his life was just Benga. But here come some guys who are like deeply rooted into hip hop. And they're like, yeah, they wanna fuse hip hop and Benga. And it shocked me the way Ocheng readily accepted to do a collab with those people. He was so excited about it. And I think we didn't even do more than uh, two takes and it was done. And we had a fun night. <laughs>
uplifting feel to walk again to our new home at the Godan Art Center, Ketabu Music, Havo Cheng and, and Danger and Casio welcome us with this music that they created for our, our song. It's a humbling, great feeling and we get ready to go uh, to one of the studio rooms in Ketabu, work with producer Nick, uh, Nico and these guys to create some benga magic right here in Nairobi. We're just arriving back here at our, our second home the Go Down Art Center, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, we're at the Ketabul Studios, and we're really honored today to be working with a, a legendary Benga musician, Ochen Nelly. All right, guys, you ready for this? Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Go see him with the Yeah. Great work. Let's just move to the studio. All right. Down. Sounds sounds great. Good, good. Welcome back, guys. All right. Yes. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> Steve, my man. How's it going? Good. Did you get some good rest up in my washer? That's right. Well, I'm giving you some rest. All right. Yeah. Here is uh, Benga music, which to me at the time was something I'd never heard before. So it was, it was an amazing experience. I basically never interviewed someone who had uh, that much experience as Wu Cheng had. So it was um, more of a learning process also to me as a journalist, in the sense that I was uh, getting information that previously I didn't know. And I was also getting um, pers the perspective of someone who is experienced in, in music, you know, on um, the trends, the current trends in music. For instance, I remember him, uh, you know, writing of the, the Ohangla craze as, you know, uh, a non-issue because he believed Ohangla controversially wasn't, you know, kind of pure Luo music. Even when there were fiction or there were, you know, in a form of poetry, he still felt the message so strongly. He understood what he was doing. His voice for a 72 year old, his guitar playing, I wish I can play guitar that way or I can still maintain my ability to play when I'm 72. You know, he had a passion for the instrument. Anytime we sat down, the first thing we did is pull out a guitar and he would play for, you know, endlessly, you know, and it makes some of us feel weak. Chesa guitar, another kuchesa guitar solo. He's an extremely good guitarist and he has his own style which is unique and uh, exceptional. Because within his guitar, there's rhythm guitar inside, then there's lead guitar inside which plays the melody inside. So there was a bit of bass also in his guitar. So to find space within, the guitar and his voice and uh, to make sense out of his songs and not interfere with what he's singing was the most difficult part in the initial stages. But uh, through his guidance we, we found a way through. I played those uh, lower rhythms and he was quite impressed and he was like, ah, wewe msichana mdogo hivi bwana nani amekufundisha kucheza ngoma? I mean that means like Hey, little girl, man, who taught you how to play percussions? Like, 
this is amazing. And he used to encourage me a lot because um, I guess he used to see the struggles that I used to have in the in the industry that is mostly inhabited by men. And he used to encourage me a lot and he used to give me strength and hope to carry on. And um, he he wasn't a slow learner for sure because um, we, we wouldn't rehearse for so long. And when we went on stage, he had a vibrant energy like he knew how to talk to the crowd, he knew what to do at what time, and his guitar skills were simply amazing. Like, I don't know if we'll ever find someone who will uh, who'll be able to play guitar like the same style as, as, as Ocheng Nelly's. It's, it was difficult, his, his, his guitar had like, people would say it had stiff wires that would really hurt your fingers when you'd, you'd play it. It wasn't like any normal guitar. And um, there's this um, plectrum that he used to wear on his thumb. I'll never forget that plectrum. It was as hard as a rock, man. It was, and, and he's the only one who was able to play that thing. Like I've never seen anyone else able to play with that kind of plectrum. Most of the Benga artists, and if I can give an example, Ruchieng Nelly for example, if you watch Ruchieng play, he was the first person who fell in love with the music that he was playing. So by default that meant that he was already consumed. And that could be seen even the way the audience receives his music. Because we, you know, in, in a Chiang performance meant that you have to shut out some five hours of, of you know, and, and you just listen to that music. It is a story, it is benga, it is guitars being picked. And, 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 and it's five hours that, you know, stays etched in one's mind. His relationship to his instrument was self-evident, that this was his baby, this was a way that he shared himself to everybody. And that relationship is like, you know, love, you know? You, you felt his love for his instrument, and you felt his love in his face, and his smile as he sang. So I'm just, you know, I feel like those two, the guitar and Ocheng Nelly, were meant to be. And they started together back in the late 50s. Imagine, you know, 50 years down the road, this man was still sharing his love with his instrument. And, I'm glad I was able to be around to feel that and to know him for the little while that I did. Oh, the way he understood Benga, the way he played his guitar, the way he plucked it, mm -hmm. nobody plays that kind of style anymore. So he was a unique artist, he was very talented, he was very professional, and uh, we we're surely going to miss that kind of, uh, of uh, figure. His guitar was very, uh, it's kind of weird, but it was very simple yet extremely complex at the same time. Like uh, the way he played his guitar was very, intricate and delicate you know like uh, he would play he would play like a full range of music like from the rhythm section to the melody you know and uh, even going to as far as improvising every now and then all at the same time he is the k kind of commentator who doesn't just go with the hype you know there's something deeper he wants to he listens to in in, in music and he can actually give an interpretation based on where all these styles are coming from. So in that sense, he was very useful to say someone who's doing a documentary or who wants to dig deeper into the history of uh, you know, Kenyan music. I don't think anybody else, uh, most of the guys of his uh, age are they either dead or they've retired from active music. So definitely there's a big gap and I don't think it's going to be filled because there's nobody to fill that gap anymore. Unless now it's the young generation of artists that worked with him who will try and uh, look, look up to, his, to him and his work and try to recreate this kind of work. I personally uh, play Benga and I'm thinking if I was doing it uh, as a full-time job, then I would be very frustrated. Okay? Because my Benga is appealing to a certain niche. 
you know, and unfortunately a lot of those folks are either dying or they're going into retirement. So if you look at the statistics, 70% of Kenyans today are 35 and below. Then where does, in the overall scheme of things, where does Benga find its space? So sometimes it's also strategic. If, if we begin now and tell these musicians who are coming into the studio that you guys, there's a huge opportunity here for Benga. What you need to do is panel beat it, make it relevant in the 21st century, and let's run with it. All these shows that we see on all the media houses, on K24, on KTN, on, on you know, they are, they are now beginning to gain traction. And if it's happening on programming, then it can also happen in music. The question is who will do it? Because Ocheng has rested. Who will do it? We have to start inculcating in the musicians that you guys have to do it. You know, that, you know that when they play together, Eddie, uh, Winyo, um, Mr. Ochenga, Oche, Ocheng Nelly, that, I, I mean, that, that, that was an emotive moment because, one, they are accomplished artists, all the three of them together. Then when you see the old and the younger, you know, working together in harmony and bringing up a good sound, all I can say is that that was very awesome. It was, for, for me, it was a great moment. And that is no small statement. It's a big thing. Uh, the, the highlight of that day was uh, Ocheng Nelly, Eddie Gray, and Winyo performing together. And I say this and it's true, I was balancing tears. I had tears in my eyes because of that performance, the three of them. Those are like three very great musicians. And hearing them perform together was totally amazing. And yes, uh, Ocheng Lili was a happy person. He was easy to interact with. Actually, we had a way. He didn't uh, address me. Uh, he didn't address me with my real names. He would call me Nyaro Susa or, <laughs> or Nyatio Susa, which uh, Osusa being my boss. I don't even know how he came up with his names, but I would answer to them because that's how he wanted to call me. We worked on, um, on an album of his where he came by and, and re-recorded some of his old tracks, like I'd said. But I also got the privilege to record two songs with him. One was off my album, Stories by the Lake, and the song is called Our Children. I called him one time to studio and I'd written this piece and he listened to it. And um, in fact, it was just, I needed him as a voiceover to just introduce the song in Luo because the melody and the style had some similarity to the Benga technique. So I needed someone of that time or heritage to come and just lay a voice over. But the moment he started talking, you know, it, the, his voice sat so well on the song and he, you know, just like playfully just sang one or two lines you know, as he finished speaking, and that, and those one or two lines became the chorus of the song. You know, Wapeni Madawa, Wapeni Chakula. His voice just sat on the song so well that instead of just being a voiceover, he ended up being the lead vocal for the track Our Children. So,
he uh, he also understood a little bit of jazz and and Spanish music, Latin music. He had also played some Congolese music. So when he played, you know, you could tell there's fusion in how he arranged his music. And that's what drew me to him. And we ended up recording one of his songs that's also coming off my second album now, um, called Pilgrimage. And the song is called Nelly. Um, and I think the other time I recorded him was, uh, it was for a, a, an overseas project. Um, uh, working with a percussionist, Casiva. Uh, His age difference and our age difference, it must have been very, very difficult for him to work with us. But um, he was quite patient with us and he was patient with everything we used to do. Anything funny we used to do in, uh, during rehearsals and uh, obvious mistakes probably. And also ranging uh, from uh, his, his, you know, scope of knowledge of of music and ours i mean he he was he he was in the music industry for a very long time as compared to us people and you know he had the patience to teach us um stuff that we probably didn't know the kind of music he was playing it was more groovy more african more typical original and then the second song was one of his compositions called Nelly, where he sings about himself and his guitar playing. I heard that song the first time and it just, it just killed me, you know, it, was, it knocked me to my senses. And he had a style of playing that was not very traditional. You know, sometimes when you say banger, you think it's traditional or local. So if you listen to Ocheng Nelly playing, I think for me, from my perception as a guitar player, what really st struck me was his virtuosity. He had a, we, we usually call that a style of playing solo guitar, where it's not just playing the lead notes, or he's not just playing the chords, but he's combining both of them, seeing a songwriter technique. And, you know, he, he played bass lines, on his own chords and he played melody lines over the same bass line and chord. So he was a complete guitarist. You know, sometimes when you say the word one man guitar, it sounds like it's something to laugh about. But no, he was actually a one man guitarist. He could sit down on his own and play completely without need of accompaniment. He accompanied his own guitar playing, which is something that is very rare. And very many people have not learned this technique. And, you know, now with what he, I think the only saving grace is that he's been able to influence a, a few people who have also come out and are playing in the same style. And then there's also the, the idea that it, it's shared, even jazz music has the same, you know, same components. Nelly was playing one guitar, but from the listening, you'd, you'd listen to like, you'd listen to the rhythm, you'd listen to the solo, you listen to the bass from the same one guitar. So it was unique to me and and even the lyrics, the way he's singing with that age, I had no words to describe his talent. I loved most of his music, like uh, Ogilo, Osare, there is a Celestina, and then my favorite being the Oteno Sambusa, where he would mention most of my colleagues, and of course I was one of them, and he would call me Nyakenya. He, he would call me Nyakenya, Nyakenya, yes. Or also he has mentioned me as Nyathio Susa. He was a jovial person, uh, full of fun. He was a legend. About mentioning names, that's part of the culture, it's the African culture. They say in the Luo language, from Uero Namanitie, which actually loosely translates that music sings about those who are present. So if you are within uh, the uh, I mean, his concert, within a room or whatever, he will definitely sing about it. Not just me, but all most of his friends. It's part of our culture. It's praise singing. <laughs> Yeah.
Most of the Benga artists, and if I can give an example, Ochieng Nelly, for example, if you watch Ochieng play, he was the first person who fell in love with the music that he was playing. So by default, that meant that he was already consumed. And that could be seen even the way the audience receives his music. Because we, you know, in, an Ochien performance meant that you have to shut out some five hours of, of you know, and, and you just listen to that music. It is a story, it is benga, it is guitars being picked. And, 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 and it is five hours that, you know, stays etched in one's mind. Mm -hmm. 